Welcome inside Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by Patriots expert columnist for WEEI.com, Christopher Price. After the Patriots make it a perfect 10, 10 and 0 with a 20 to 13, not so perfect win over the Buffalo Bills. Rex Ryan still having nightmares, but maybe Chris, not as many nightmares tonight as head official, head referee, Gene Steratore. This game will be known as the Whistlegate game, the game in which Tom Brady was running out of bounds but stayed in bounds, found Danny Omendola down the sideline for what appeared to be a brilliantly uh, manufactured touchdown, but alas, the touchdown was called back because of an inadvertent whistle. Your thoughts on the play and how the Gene Steratore crew handled things? Well, he basically, and we, we talked to someone who spoke with him after the game, basically admitted, look, we screwed up in this situation. I, I think at the end of the day, the important thing to remember is that it didn't end up costing the Patriots the game. It was a bad call in a season filled with bad calls from referees. But at the same time, Patriots still end up winning this thing 2013. Uh, you know, you, you, you would like to think that, there was some sort of mea culpa from the league. We've seen the quote from Dean Blandino, the head of officiating already, to that point. And so it's going to be interesting to see what sort of upshot comes out of all this. But I think at the end of the day, the officials, Sterator, Blandino, they admitted who was at fault here. Again, I think the important thing is it didn't end up costing the Patriots the win. And Whistlegate was not the only uh, questionable call of the night. There was a questionable call right till the very end when it appeared a receiver for the Bills caught the ball inbounds and rolled out of bounds, which would have saved the or saved the final two seconds of the game for at least a banged up Tyrod Taylor to throw some, or even maybe EJ Manuel to throw some type of hail mary down the field and into the end zone for a potential game tie and touchdown. But that was not the case. And then there was the, also the James White second touchdown run of the game, where there was offsides. But what was so bizarre about that play uh, on uh, James White's second touchdown of the night is it took five minutes to hammer out the fact that it was an offsides call and it was a touchdown to, that stood anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It was a weird night, and there were a couple of guys in the Patriots locker room who discussed the fact that there wasn't much of a flow to this one. You know, it, there, there was no rhythm. It was up and down. There was a lot of action. Then there were breaks. Whether it was a national, you know, because it was a national TV game, a Monday night game, you're going to get more commercials anyway. But it just felt like a game that kind of slogged along. I said on Twitter, it felt like a tractor pull of a game sure in did. more ways than one. Right. It's cold. It's just it's difficult for the offense to put anything together to get any sort of sustained drive. So it, it was a slow game to begin with. And then when you add in some questionable officiating, to their credit, they all gathered around. They tried to get it right on every single occasion, but it just kind of slowed things down. It was a difficult game to watch, to follow along, to be a part of. Three hours and 30 minutes worth of a long game here on Monday night on a very cold and windy Gillette Stadium. But for the Patriots, it certainly was worth it. I did ask Belichick about Whistlegate, and he did not throw Gene Steratour under the bus. He obviously respects Gene Steratour, as many around the NFL do, as one of the very best officials in the National Football League. He thought Steratour, uh, after his crew got together, did a very good job of explaining it and move along. So Belichick wasn't going to get stuck on that. But... Let's move on to the game itself. Two big injuries for the Patriots offense, which has already been depleted with the losses of Julian Edelman and Deion Lewis coming in. Tonight they lose potentially two receivers, Aaron Dobson in the first half to an ankle injury, and then Danny Amendola to a, a, a potential knee injury. We do not know the severity. He did not talk after the game. But how do the Patriots keep on keeping on with all these injuries piling up? It's in the hate the cliche, but it's next man up. A lot of guys in that locker room discussed that very point. Rob Gronkowski, Brandon LaFell, James White right. all talked about how everyone now has to collectively continue to raise their games in the wake of those losses. You like to think Amendola will be back sooner rather than later. Edelman, we know the timetable there. Deion Lewis obviously out for the rest of the season. So you can game plan down the road. doesn't make it any easier, but you're going to need to see bigger and better performances out of the guys who remain, the Brandon LaFells, the Kishon Martins, if he gets healthy and gets right. back out on the field. You're going to see more from Brandon Bolden and James White. Those kinds of guys are going to have to raise their game, in addition to Chris Harper, a guy we saw for the first time tonight. So as a group, they need to take their game from here to here in the wake of all these injuries. Tom Curran of uh, CSNNE asked Tom Brady after the game, did you figure it would eventually catch up with you, be tough? And, he, and Tom Brady took a moment to pause and then said, yep, we did. We figured it'd be a tough grudge uh, or it would be a tough sledding out there on Monday night, and that's exactly what it was. I thought Tom Brady 
uh, Chris, showed his toughness as much as he has ever shown in the regular season. This is as physically pounding, uh, physically demanding of a game as I've seen him really endure mm -hmm. in the regular season in a long time. Yeah, I, I think this is probably the most physical game that they have played to this point in the schedule. I think when you consider the Buffalo defense, they, I think they were better than that week two game indicated. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be completely honest. And they came into this game, they had a good game plan. And you got to give Rex a lot of credit. He right. was able to get after Brady. He was able to, to, to manufacture some pass rush and be able to get after Brady on a consistent basis, knock him around a little bit. But like you said, Brady was able to hang in. He was able to make some throws, just enough throws for the Patriots to end up pulling this thing out. I know we're both freezing out here, but one more quick one about James White and the contribution he made tonight. Two touchdowns, one running, one receiving. Great stiff arm. Uh, on uh, the Corey on Corey Graham uh, heading into the end zone, I thought that was a terrific play by James White. Yeah, it really was. And you, you're looking at a guy in James White who hasn't had a whole lot of snaps in his year plus in the league, so it's been a bit of a challenge for him to get up to speed. I think he did very, very well tonight, uh, and he's going to be one of those guys who's going to be called upon now to do more going forward. I thought he responded well this evening, but you're going to need to see more of that in the coming weeks. All right, short week now. The Patriots get to really ramp it up for the long-awaited match with the Denver Broncos in Mile High, Sports Authority Field at Mile High. But it won't be Peyton Manning. It will be Brock Osweiler. And I think that really, really uh, kind of shapes up yeah. as a fascinating week because this is a quarterback, six foot eight. They don't know particularly a lot about. They have won now one game on film, a win against the Chicago Bears on Sunday, but they don't know a lot about him. Yeah, I, I think the fascinating thing about Osweiler is you can look at past Gary Kubiak offenses. You can get a sense of what you're going up against. You can look at some old Denver Broncos film. You can look at some old Baltimore Ravens film when he was in Baltimore. There are things that you can look at to try and get an assessment of where that offense is and what they like to do and some of the strengths and weaknesses. But in terms of Osweiler himself, how he responds to this kind of pressure is going to be fascinating to see on Sunday night when how he responds when he's faced right. with a challenge of going up against the Bill Belichick-led defense. All right, until then, the Patriots can savor their 10th win of the year against zero losses. The AFC East is all but over, Chris. I think you've written that before, and certainly a 20-13 to 13 win over the Buffalo Bills really cements that really for the Patriots. Another AFC, AFC East crown uh, is in the bag. He is Christopher Price. I'm Mike Petralia inside a frigid Gillette Stadium, weei.com.